In this video, we're going to take a look at how to add in the foundation walls to create the basement. Before we get into that in Revit, let's take a look at a simple wall section in AutoCAD here. So, so far we have the first and second floor walls in. So that's what I've got here. Here's the first floor walls, here's the second floor walls. Now right now, we've got that as one continuous 19 foot tall wall. Eventually when we put floors in, we'll have the option to cut the geometry out of the walls here. So right now ours just show up as, as one continuous tall wall. But taking a look at the components that we have inside of our wall section, eventually again when we start to put in our floors, our first floor walls are going to be sitting on top of the floor. And then that floor is going to be sitting on a 2x6 sill plate that is attached to the top of the foundation wall. So the foundation wall is what we're going to be drawing in this unit. And eventually we'll have the footing underneath it as well, but we won't draw that just yet. And eventually we'll also have the basement floor. So the first thing to notice on the foundation wall is that typically when people think I'm gonna draw the basement plan, so I'm gonna draw my walls on the basement level. And that's not correct. As you can see here, the basement level is actually the top of the basement floor slab. The foundation wall itself goes down here to the top of footing. So that's going to be the bottom of your foundation wall, and the top of your foundation wall will be at the foundation level. So the foundation level is actually the level where I want to draw this at inside of Revit. So let's switch back to Revit and take a look at where our building is so far. Once more, we've got the first and second floors developed, we've got all our windows and doors, and now we're ready for the foundation walls. So to begin with, I'm going to the foundation level, like we discussed a moment ago. If I do not already have the first floor underlay turned on here, I'll go ahead and turn that on, but as you can see, it's already set to first floor. I'm going to use a 12 inch thick foundation wall around the outside of the house. So I'll start with the wall tool. And one of the things you'll notice that's a little different with foundation walls, when I'm doing a regular wall, I'm asked for the height value. I can see it here, as well as my top constraint here. If I switch to a foundation wall, such as the foundation 12 inch concrete, it now shows me my depth value instead. By default, it wants to go down to the next level, which in this case is basement, and like we just discussed a few minutes ago, that's not the level I want. I want it to go down to the top of footing. So top constraints at foundation, bottom is at top of footing. Then when I'm getting ready to draw the foundation wall in here, I want to make sure I align the walls properly. And again, taking a look at our wall section here, you can see that the foundation wall is set to align with the outside of the first floor walls. Now this particular wall has siding, but if it had brick, we would need a ledge for the brick to sit on. So the foundation wall, the outside surface, lines up with the outside surface of your first floor walls. So I'm going to make sure that I've got my location line set to finish face exterior, and I'm going to click on one of the outside corners and draw around the house. and then back to the first one. So let's take a look at 3D, see what we got here. So I got a decent foundation wall here. Uh, there is going to be a gap between the walls for a while until we do our wall section and clean things up. Again, if we take a look at our wall section, what is eventually gonna happen is we're gonna have the floor in here and then we are going to pull the plywood sheathing and the siding down past the floor to cover up that gap. So that'll come a little later, just don't want you to be concerned right now that there is going to be a gap in there for a little while. On the garage, since we're supporting a smaller structure, we don't need to use quite as thick of a foundation wall. In fact, you're going to be using an 8 inch thick foundation wall. However, you'll find that when you go to the wall tool, there is no 8 inch thick, so you'll need to start with an existing foundation wall, edit type, then 
duplicate. And then I'm just going to change the name to reflect 8 inches instead of 10. And then I will edit the structure and make it 8 inches thick. Alright, and once more I'm going to double check my levels. It's going foundation down to top of footing, exterior, I'll snap on here. Remember I can tap the space bar to flip the direction of the walls. So as you can see, a much thinner wall here around the garage, but it should be thick enough to support the garage itself. Now in this exercise, they have you create the walls underneath the garage the same depth as the walls around the rest of the house. Technically, your walls don't need to be this deep around the garage. Since we don't have a basement under the garage, it's just gonna be filled in. What it does need to be is at least three feet below the frost line, at least here in Kansas. So um, you can follow the tutorial and do it just like this, but keep in mind when you do your houses later on, you only need a three foot deep foundation wall around your garages. You are going to be putting in additional walls in your basement. So if I go down to my basement level, I can see my walls there now, and I wanna copy and paste some of the walls from the first floor plan. So I'll go back to the first floor plan and you'll create a section window or a selection window, something like this. And your book takes you through the filter process to only select walls. So you're going to click on the little funnel down here in the bottom right corner. And then we will check none for the categories and then only select walls and click OK. So now that only the walls are selected, you're going to copy. So as we've done before up here in my clipboard, I'm going to click on copy. Then I will go to the basement plan and I'm going to paste aligned to the current view. So this is nothing new but there's going to be a little message that pops up that I want to explain to you. So I'll paste aligned to current view and I get this message that highlighted walls overlap. One of them may be ignored when Revit finds room boundaries. So why is it giving me that message? Well what's actually happening happening is that the walls are overlapping vertically. So if I take a look in 3D and I'm going to use the EH shortcut that we've talked about already to do an element hide on some of these items so I can see inside this house and I'll switch to shaded you can see it a little better it's in the shaded mode. But you can actually see that these walls overlap. So what happened is I have these nine feet tall walls and I copied them down to the basement and there's not enough room to fit a nine foot tall wall in there. So you're going to ignore that message for now. I just wanted to explain why you were seeing it so that you know you didn't do anything wrong. What's eventually going to happen is when we put in the first floor we will tell Revit to go ahead and attach this wall and all the walls to the bottom of that floor. So again when you see that message do not worry. So again that's a few tips on laying out and creating your basement in Autodesk Revit.